Welcome to MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone. Today I've got Ndumi with me from R3 Agency. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your business. My business is called I3 Agency. Um, that comes from our tagline, um, which is uh, Inspire, Invest, Ignite. And that's basically the message that we are encouraging throughout um, corporate and other businesses to um, inspire their employees, invest in their employees, and ignite them through their values and their vision. And basically what we do is um, internal marketing and branding. Um, which basically focuses on um, creating internal marketing campaigns um, directed at employees uh, with an aim of encouraging them to, um, to live the values of the organization and to understand and pursue the vision of the organization. And what persuaded you to get into this line of business? Well, I'll say I'm a, quite a rebel. Um, I, by the time I actually started my own business, I had been working for more than 10 years and because I started working very young. And um, what I'd observed over the years is, is, is that gap that actually no one looks after the culture of the organization. And yet everyone says it's so important. And um, after I graduated in BCom Marketing, I felt the void to do something about this. And I went through a series of personal development um, workshops, um, some with the likes of John Demartini, and went through exercises. And what I found is that I feel very strongly about service, customer service, uh, service experience. I feel strongly about leadership and, of course, this issue of culture. And the question was, how then do I do something, you know, that covers this, um, that, that addresses this challenge um, through the way that I know how? And the only way really that I knew how was marketing. That is why we use marketing elements, the creativity, then we use the inspirational aspect, and then we obviously incorporate values and the vision, and we create amazing, amazing activations out of that for employees. And it was a big step from you, for you to leave a job and start a, an agency? I would say yes. Um, it's very risky, and um, I admit that I didn't tell my dad for a good two years that I'd taken that step because to him I'll always be his little girl and um, I didn't want him to worry and I just wanted to go out there and just get started. So in 2009 November, uh, that was the first time that I was actually on my own and uh, by January 2010, I3 Agency had been founded. And what sort of clients do you work with? Well, basically, uh, corporate. Corporate would be our clientele. Um, we would be very happy to take on some government work, uh, government agencies, because they actually, um, we believe that they need the service. Because what we do basically questions how you do your business. Because culture is about what you do, how you do it, and when you do it, and how fast you do it, which is the most important part. So if uh, customer service is a big issue at government, you cannot go in there and just do customer service training. You need to fix the culture of the organization first before you can actually get to a point where you, where you can then train people on customer service. Doing the one without the other, you're just really fixing the symptom, but not necessarily the problem. You talk passionately about uh, the area. When you started the business, did, did it require you to educate your, your customers? I'm still educating my customers, to be quite honest with you, um, because some of them, they just think, oh, well, so you're talking about a newsletter. And it's not about the newsletter. It's not about, it's not that simple. Because we are saying, if culture is so important in your organization, it means then you need to be strategic about it. You need to identify themes that are important at this point in time in your organization and link those themes or those, those, those uh, focal points into your long-term strategy. And then do something every day about it. There is no way that we can cultivate a positive culture if we're leaving it on hope. You had to step out of a job and start a business. You had to create credibility around yourself and build your brand. How did you do that from day one? I took what I had learned from someone that it's okay to do what you have to do in order for you in time to do what you love to do. So I was okay with taking on, 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 on um, assignments that were not necessarily in line with what I3 Agency was, 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 was um, designed for. And I could have turned that away and say, oh, no, I don't do this. The idea for me was that I needed the money to learn everything that I needed to learn. I needed the time to make the mistake. 
and, and mistakes. In fact, we make a lot of mistakes in entrepreneurship. So um, I took on, on assignments and I, I, I mean, I, I did other things. I did voiceovers. I did um, copywriting for those who can't write their own business plan. You know, they can, they have the idea, but they don't know how to express it in proper business English. Um, so I took on little things to bring in the money while I shape the, this baby, i3 agency. Your baby's growing now. Uh, it's been going for three years and you've started to take on employees. How have you found that challenge of imparting your passion and your experience and building the culture within your own business? It caught me by surprise. I must, I must, I must confess that um, I think it's easy to overlook it because you don't know, you have not been there. Um, and with me having worked from a very young age, I've always been in an environment where I was coached and I was told and taught how to do everything. Now, of course, this being a small business, uh, obviously will take on more younger stuff. And, um, and that comes with constant coaching and teaching on how to express yourself on email, uh, not use SMS language, how to greet and so on. I, I'm a perfectionist. I can't overlook that. But in terms of um, sharing my vision, I really look for, I look for a work ethic. In, in, in people that I bring on board. And I think that's more important than anything. Um, and I, I state up front that it's about the attitude. Um, we, it's just females in, our, in, our, in, in the company. So we've got all the, the diva mentality and the swag and, and we wanna have the fun, but we work through the night if we must. We work on weekends if we must. For me, that's what's important. Then you saying I've got the degree, I've got the, um, I've got the 10 years of experience. And in terms of sharing the vision, it's just really communicating that on a, co on a continuous basis where you say, this is where we're going and we have weekly status uh, meetings and I'll say, this is your project and this is what we're hoping to achieve out of it. This is what we're hoping for this particular assignment. What we, this is what we're hoping to learn so that we can do this in, in two years, three years, five years. So it's, it's just really staying at it every day. You also work with partners, business consultants and the like. How do you manage those relationships and how do you build the trust with those uh, individuals? I was lucky to actually have existing relationships um, in, in that space already when I got into the business. So I work with people that I already know and uh, I'm also okay to work with people that know more than me, that, that, that do more work than me. In that way, when I have my small assignment and my small deal, they're probably going, oh, cute, instead of saying, we want that deal, right? Um, and I'm okay with that because I learn from them and um, they hold me by the hand through the journey as we, as we craft um, solutions for our various clients. And being part of a cultural change or promoting culture within a business means that you need to be at the heart of those businesses. How do you learn um, about the culture and about the ethics and, and about the nature of these big corporates? Um, there's part of it that I'll say is intuition, um, but some of the stuff is really obvious. For example, when people have values that are on the wall and when you enter their reception, nothing about those values is transparent. Already when you, when you walk into, into an organization, you can feel, you can see, you can smell everything. Culture is something that people do every single day without them noticing it. Self-development, for example, we prioritize that within the organization and the people that you work with. People that prioritize self-development because if you don't know anything about yourself, you are highly unlikely to actually even bother about knowing things about other people. So that we bring strongly into the business. When we go out there into meetings, into workshops, into interactions, when we on site doing internal activations, we are observing the entire time. And we come back, we then identify the gaps, and we build more work out of that, or more solutions out of what you've observed. For a small business that's starting to grow and the founder wants to import the culture um, on that business and make sure that it maintains as the business grows, what advice would you give to them? The most important part, I'll say, lead by example. So the one thing, people copy behavior. They do what the leader, leader does. So if you respect time, supposedly, then be on time, whether you're the boss or not, demonstrate that instead of just saying it. So it's one thing to actually have these values that are defined by the organization, no, no matter how small, no matter how big, but application thereof is what's more important. Values need to be given a persona in the context in which they mean to your business. 
doesn't matter what the business, how big the business is, doesn't matter how small the business is, the idea is that people need to understand that your values um, are genuine, your values are not negotiable, your values are real, and that they, they make sense in terms of the industry, in terms of the products you are selling. But the person to demonstrate those first is yourself. And it happens in language, it's what you speak, it's what you do, it's how you do it. That's the only way I believe people can actually impart what they stand for and ultimately their vision. And there's a creative part to what you, you do in terms of communicating this. Yes. How do you look for creative inspiration? We uh, source inspiration everywhere from little children to the sun shining right um, but we attract that into the organization as well so in terms of having the designer that looks beyond just designing that understands um, the spiritual context of of a design um, we we are constantly researching there is never we have a saying that we can never say we're done your business is, is growing nicely what next for you to look at more uh, you know in terms of size bigger in terms of corporate um, more a national account because we, we haven't had a national account that would be challenging because that would mean then they've got internal marketing campaigns that are running in different branches concurrently and that would be an interesting challenge to have. That brings us on to the rapid fire questions. What's the best advice you've ever received? Create systems as early as you can. And uh, your best moment as an entrepreneur? I thought it would have been linked to money but it wasn't. It was when someone says I work for I3 agency. And your biggest mistake? not putting on systems on time and um, delaying big amount of VAT at, at the early stage of the business. What do you look for in people that you work with? Attitude and uh, work ethic. What does an entrepreneur need to succeed? Tenacity. What inspires you as a small business owner? Well, knowing that every day I just have an opportunity to be anywhere in the world and to make however big I wish. What would you do differently? Pay my taxes on time. <laughs> what makes South Africa a good place to be an entrepreneur? I'm not quite sure if South Africa is actually a very supportive environment for entrepreneurship. What keeps you awake at night? An exciting project, a deadline. Other than that, nothing really. And what gets you going in the morning? Knowing that I've got this opportunity to make an impact in people's lives. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you. We look forward to the coming weeks where we'll bring you further South African entrepreneurs. I'm Paul Hobden. Thank you and goodbye.